We're now joined by Yusuf Saluji, the National Council Against Smoking, former Executive Director, and Lekan Ayo Yusuf, the WCTOH Scientific Committee Chairperson. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us in our studio. Good morning. Um, I'm going to start with you first, Yusuf. Um, this conference in Cape Town, South Africa, why is it so important to bring the World Tobacco Conference to South Africa and more importantly the African region? I think it's highly significant that it's being held in Africa because Africa's future is at stake. As the Minister of Health said earlier, at the moment 77 million South Africans smoke. In the next 20, 30 years it's going to go up to 500 million and with it will come cancer, heart disease, lung diseases. So the future of Africa is at stake and therefore by focusing on the issues of Africa, providing support and need and networking for Africa, we hope that we can prevent the, the epidemic that's going to occur in the near future. Lekan, what are some of the challenges that the wider African region faces with regards to tobacco control? It comes from the natural epidemic. The pattern is that you know people would use tobacco and it takes many years for you to see the actual manifestation in terms of disease. But now with the understanding that tobacco use is not just only about health, but it's about development, and those development challenges you actually face in the immediate term. One of the problems that we've had is the tobacco industry uh, trying to corrupt governments and trying to interfere with the process of policy making. Um, most of the countries that we've looked at, um, the present tobacco industry, I mean, this is a multi-billion dollar industry whose uh, revenue um, is as high as the old GDP of a country themselves and they basically portray themselves as good guys helping the economy and they seem to basically focus on supposed economic benefit of this as you heard the minister there's really no social or economic benefit to human being. The FCTC article 5.3 in particular actually provides governments with a clear guideline of what you need to do and I'm very sure that in just a matter of time when the implementation of Article 5.3 from, from 5 takes effect, we will begin to see tobacco industry fade away and government become braver uh, to take this policy decision. Well, so following on from that, uh, South Africa is sitting on this amendment to the Tobacco Control Act. What exactly does it stipulate and why is government dragging its feet? Okay. Um, what it means is, as, as the Minister has indicated already, that at the moment we have 25% of indoor public spaces set aside for smoking. Now the rest of the world has moved way beyond that. When South Africa first passed the legislation in 1999, it was good. But we've passed way beyond that. And most places are now 100% no smoking. But I must also add that since the Framework Convention was passed, many African countries have taken action. So that for instance, countries like Mauritius, like Madagascar, have picture-based health warnings. Now in a country like ours, where very few people can read, pictures can tell a story better than a thousand words. Smoking can leave you unable to walk, unable to talk, and unable to breathe. And we haven't sent that message to our people, so that's part of what is in the legislation. Lekan, would you say in the African region uh, uh, the youth are a soft target and why are they so important in driving the change and the trends in, 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 in tobacco control? Yeah, <clears throat> most certainly they are a soft target. Um, as we all know, the strategy is always you know, under the uh, social, uh, corporate social investment to provide exercise books to youths um, and keep the brand in their imprinted in their ads even before they even start so that they can actually move and uh, follow a trajectory of brand loyalty. So they are definitely a target in a, you know, in a continent where to actually get resources to buy exercise book is very scarce. So industry comes in and says, we're supplying all of you or we're creating the sport event uh, or a concert you know, to have fun. So that they need to understand that they're a target not a beneficiary. So you said final question for you, what does the future look like for tobacco control in South Africa and the African region? I'm an optimist. I believe we don't have a choice. Seven million deaths in accelerating. Governments have to do something. The last 10 years have shown that African governments are beginning to take the issue seriously. So I'm hoping, I'm not hoping, I expect 
the South African government to pass the legislation it has promised. And I expect many African countries to, to also do something to protect their people. At the end of the day, it's about making sure people don't get sick and die. All right, gentlemen, thank you for your insight and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much.